in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you always thank you for watching be blessed I'll teach for a very short time because we have a lot to do tonight is a communion service by the grace of God and then is also an anointing service by the grace of God I'll be laying hands on everyone tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus many of you have gotten so familiar with the laying on of hands you just think it's about touching your forehead no it's about an impartation is about activating something in your life hallelujah I welcome all those who came from far it's always a blessing having people come around we give God all the praise hallelujah worthy is the who was slain holy holy is he sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Was and is and is the God. Father, we give you all the praise because you are faithful. You are the lamb that sits upon the throne and we honor you in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise to him who sits on the throne and unto the lamb. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb, to Him who sits on the throne, and unto the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and power forever. Forever is 
has done it forever and ever. It's forever. It's forever. It's forever. Thank you for your blood. We give you all the praise for the blood. And we are eternally grateful for shedding that precious blood. That blood that was shed for our sins. The price, the ultimate price. You pay the price, the highest price, and I'm so grateful for your love. You took my pain, and now I stand. To be called your very own. It's because you leave, Jesus, I leave. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you leave, Jesus, I leave today. I pray that tonight God will give us at least a bit of the revelation of what Jesus Christ went through for our sake. Lord, you took our place. You truly paid the price. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb, and we praise you. Let the name of Jesus be lifted. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for your death, for giving yourself for us. We remain grateful. We truly, truly remain grateful. I really want to worship you, my God. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Gave you to set me free. So I lift my voice to you. Hallelujah. The entire scope of our Christian experience is about knowing what God has done for us in Christ and our response to that reality. Hallelujah. This afternoon I was watching the Jesus film and I couldn't help but begin to cry. I just sat down. It was not initiated by me. I was just watching it and I said, goodness. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God. I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, my 
Jesus is the Lamb of God, bread of heaven, sent down from glory, many things you are on earth, a holy king, a carpenter, you are the living word, say. Bread of heaven, sent down from glory. Many things you are on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. He is the awesome ruler, awesome ruler, Gentile redeemer. That's what I call you, major born but on a tree, you died to save you, my pity. you are the living word, Jesus, Jesus, that's what I call you, major born but on you died to save humanity. Oh, 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 the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight, very briefly, I just want to talk about just very, very briefly, the significance of the death of Jesus and why he had to shed his blood. Couldn't he have died without the blood? Hallelujah. Now listen, the realm of the spirit is a realm that works with very definite spiritual laws. Hallelujah. Everybody says spiritual laws. The realm of the spirit does not leave any chance to guess work. And the initiating of anything by man's or from man's opinion. There are exact spiritual laws that must be followed through for any process to be achieved in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. I just read two powerful spiritual laws. The first was in Ezekiel 18. The Bible says the soul that sinneth, any soul at all, is a law. The soul that sinned, it shall die. In other words, the price, the penalty, the price tag that was put upon any life that sins is death. This is according to the justice of God. This is according to the laws, the irrefutable laws of the spirit. Everyone said the soul that sinned, it shall die. It's not subject to begging not subject to negotiation any soul that sins that law catches up with the person immediately hallelujah the soul that sinned it shall die gender irrespective age irrespective hallelujah and then the bible tells us in hebrews chapter 9 how that without the shedding of blood in other words, there is another law in the spirit that if peradventure there is any chance to help that sinner, it must be with the shedding of blood. Hallelujah. 
please follow me. Two very important laws. The first law is what? The soul that sins, it shall die. That means every time you are a sinner, there is a hand of justice upon you for as long as you are still alive. A hand of justice that keeps crying for that law to be at work in your life. Are you following me now? The Bible says the soul that sins, white sin, black sin, doesn't matter. The soul that sins, it shall die. Then Hebrews chapter 9 tells us that if that issue of sin will ever be dealt with, whoever will want to deal with that sin must initiate a process of the shedding of blood. Not the donation, the shedding of blood. That means the Bible tells us that that justice is irrefutable. The only chance for it to be considered and reversed is when there is a shedding of blood. Hallelujah. So what is it about blood? Not the blood of Jesus now. What is it about blood that is so powerful that even in death, it is able to initiate a negotiation? What is it about death? About blood? The blood of anything, just blood. Hallelujah. Occultist, every religion I know, this is the common ground for every religion. They respect blood and they have something to do with blood. Hallelujah. Right from the Garden of Eden, we begin to see how that when man fell, God himself stripped a lamb, a bloody lamb, and used it to cover Adam and Eve. Right from the Garden of Eden, there was the shedding of blood. And then all through the Old Testament, we see the shedding of the blood of bulls. But the question I have is, what is it about blood? that makes it effective why not flesh why not water is it the color of the blood is blood anything that is just red in a human body is it the reddish color that gives it power because many people know that the blood saves but we do not know what is it in the blood that is so powerful that even satan and death the last enemy to be destroyed can respect it Hallelujah. All through scripture, we see that every time blood was shed, there was an invisible force that stopped men from doing whatever they wanted to do. Kings in ancient times would slaughter their children and allow the blood to spill on the earth and at once it will end the war, no matter how angry the enemies were. What is it about the blood? Not the blood of Jesus, just blood. Hallelujah. Is it the color of the blood? Or is it that the blood is liquid? So if I inject somebody now and a blue substance come out, do we call that blood? Is it the color that makes it bloody? Because you see, the reason why the church has not been able to access the power of the blood is because we have been taught that the blood is powerful. But the truth is we have not been given a revelation of what makes it powerful. What makes the blood powerful? Is it because it was Jesus that shed it? How about the ones of bulls and goats? How about the, one of, the ones of children that native doctors shed and they enter a city and kill people and no man can stop it? How about that one? King of kings, Lord of lords, you are faithful and true, Lamb of God. I worship you. I took a little study to find out what is it from, from a medical and a historical perspective. What is it about blood that makes demons tremble? What is it about blood that makes demons hungry for blood. 
How many of you have had that thing that demons and occultists and some people living in the village drink blood? There are many of us who come from places where every year they make sacrifices. And frankly speaking, they are not as concerned about the flesh, that blood. When the priest sees the blood in a calabash, he starts smiling. What does it do to him? What is the revelation? If you understand this, I'm telling you, you will walk out of certain chains this night. Just like that. It is not the color of blood that makes it powerful. It's not the color. Even if God suddenly made a pronouncement now that blood changed to blue, it will not suddenly make blood more powerful. Hallelujah. So what is it about blood that makes it powerful? Watch this. Goodness. When somebody, listen, when somebody is almost dying in the hospital, the doctors just run and they take pints of blood. Is that true? And they now begin to inject blood in the person. All of a sudden, strength returns. What did the blood do? Couldn't they have put water and just say, oh God, drink one gallon of water. Let's see how far it goes. What is it about the blood? Hallelujah. Shoot a gun at a man. If blood does not come out, a possibility exists that he may be able to survive. But let blood begin to come out. And suddenly you see the man start getting weak. And then he collapses. In spite of his skeletal structure, in spite of the brain that is at work, just one component leaving his body and the man dies. What is the power of blood? What is this mystery? Hallelujah. That makes blood so powerful. To an extent that when Cain killed Abel, the Bible says, although Abel was dead, is that true? The blood was speaking. So question, was it the blood that was Abel? I kept searching because I needed to find out. You see, the way my mind operates, my mind operates like a machine. I don't just receive things that are haphazard. I need to be convinced that these things work. Hallelujah. My mind works like a machine. You don't just tell me, okay, this and that. Just believe it just like that. No, no. I want to understand the working component of that process. What makes it work? Hallelujah. When you meet a native doctor and you tell him something is wrong, this and that, the Baba just laughs and said, these are the requirements. Bring a goat, right? Now you bring the goat and the man slaughters the goat and they ensure that the blood is drained in a calabash. As soon as the blood is drained in a calabash, things begin to happen. All kinds of satanic things. We keep singing songs. There is power in the blood. Question. If it was not Jesus that died, would there still be power in blood? Because before Jesus died, blood had been shed. And we see that it carried some mighty degree of power. For instance, the Bible tells us how that when um, the sons of Saul, remember, they were required that they had to be slain for peace to return in Israel. The Bible says Saul gave his seven sons and they slayed all the seven sons. And God himself didn't stop it. The enemy slayed seven sons. When their blood touched the earth, at once there was peace. Hallelujah. What is this factor in blood that makes it powerful? Leviticals, please. Truly, there is power in the blood of Jesus. Really, there's power in any blood, even your own. It's just that the blood of Jesus is all powerful. Leviticals, 
Leviticus 17, verse 11a. Just the A part. Levitical 17. Let's just read the whole of the verse 11. 17, 11. Are you there? One to read. Just stop there for a while. Read it again. The life of any flesh is resident where? In the brain? In the heart? Where? In the bones? It said the life of any flesh is found. There's no time for me to begin to give you. I, I just prayed that I would be able to do, just do a little teaching so that we can have time to do what we are doing tonight. I wish there was time to show you the things I found out about these scriptures that I'm sharing with you, it will blow your mind and open you up to another dimension. I hope that God grants us grace to do a teaching or a series in this place. But he said, the life of the flesh is where? Ah. So it begins to give us an idea of what the big deal is about blood. Did he say the blood of Jesus? He said it's in where? The life of any living creature is resident in his blood. Are you seeing what makes blood powerful? So, blood is not powerful because of the color. Blood is not powerful because it is liquid. Blood is powerful because the life of whatever that blood came from is resident in that blood. So, every time we talk about shedding of blood, we are really talking about giving up life. Are you getting my point? That was why in the Old Testament, a curse was put on whoever eats blood. Because as far as God was concerned, it was the same thing as eating a human being. Are you getting the revelation now? The life of the flesh is in the blood. In other words, as I'm standing right now, if you create a process and begin to drain the blood out of me without any replenishment I will stand right here and die right here is that true because the life of this flesh this body is in the blood hallelujah so the life of a goat is where the life of a human being is where the life of a chicken is where are you seeing that now so your blood represents your life are you getting me if you want to know your worth hold your blood in a calabash and this is all your worth throw it on the ground and you are gone you get the point so the entire thing about sacrifices and the mosaic law and everything it was about using life to cover are you getting my point now for something that someone had done in accordance with the law we just shared in we shared in Hebrews chapter 9 are you getting me it says without the shedding of what there is no remission of in other words without the shedding of life correct for every time somebody sins the law is either that person or whoever can volunteer on his behalf must be able to shed his life the moment he sheds his life, that sin has been lifted, waiting for another sin to be committed. You get my point? If another one is committed, another volunteer is required. That's how the law works. So every time you sin, the law begins to catch up with you. And Satan, listen to me, Satan did not create the law. Hello? That law was part of God's justice system. It was not created by God. As Satan began to explore, I hope you know Satan was in charge of justice, not just worship alone. So as Satan began to search the archives of God's justice, he found out that there was a provision there that any soul that sins, it shall die. Are you getting my point? And that for anyone to die, 
or for that sin to be forgiven, there had to be remission of sin. So when Adam came, what did Satan try to get man to do? To sin because he understood the law. Satan wanted man to die. And he said, I remember that law. Let me make God himself walk against his law. And he led man to sin. Are you getting me now? Because he never knew that there was a possibility for God to become man. So he knew that there would not be any ransom. Are you getting my point now? And listen. Because the Bible tells us that there are many kinds of bodies. Is that true? There are terrestrial. That means there are different levels and qualities of life. Are you getting me? So the gravity of your offense determines the class of the life that will be shared. That's why a herbalist can look and say, no, this condition is easy. Just bring a chicken. Based on our incantation, a chicken is within the range of life that can atone for this. When you look at one, you say, this is more than chicken. Go and bring goat. There's one that he will even say, no, bring a man. There is one that you say, no, not just a man, a pure child whose blood has not been defiled. Are you getting me? Those are acute spiritual conditions that require certain, or they say some virgins. You see, ancient kings in those days, they would bring their daughters and they had to be virgins. In other words, not touched by any man. And then they would, they would make the sacrifice, bury them alive, and use the blood to do certain things. And it worked. It worked because it was a law. Listen, let me share with you a revelation. I hope that all of us can sustain the spiritual maturity to take this. Listen, did you know that, thank God we did not come from all of these heterogeneous religions in the world. Most of us were Christians and maybe a few of us were from other religions who just came. But when you study other world's religion, all right, you will find out that most of these religions actually thrive on spiritual laws that God created. Are you getting me? When you study the content of their operation and the reason why although these are perverse religions, they seem to have results, it is because they are manipulating spiritual laws. Are you getting my point now? But the reason why they got those laws was when the fallen angels came, they began to teach men some things that they should not teach them. You think the women just gave themselves to those angels? When they came, they started saying there is a secret. I want to show you something. All that God told you is not all that there is. The Holy Ghost was supposed to be the one to teach us this. But now this wicked spirit started teaching man to know so that he can use it to destroy another man. Are you getting my point now? So they started teaching men how that you can make incantations and invoke the spirit of another. It is not like it is the invocation. Please don't misunderstand me. It is not that it is the invocation that was initiated by Satan. But the power and the knowledge that sponsors that spiritual operation is demonic. Are you getting my point now? That's why a herbalist can pray for a man and the person will be healed. Are you getting my point? What is wrong with that process? Is it the healing? The healing is wrong because it was not initiated by the spirit. Although the man is healthy, the glory does not go to God. Are you getting my point? So in the kingdom, the means also matters just as the end. I, is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Otherwise, we have no right to criticize somebody who uses voodoo or yoga to ease somebody else of stress. Are you getting my point? People do it in films and the rest. And they use these voodoo incantations. And they get people who are not pregnant, pregnant. They do a lot of things. So what is wrong with that? Everything is wrong with that. Because although it is a manipulation of spiritual laws. But it was initiated and sponsored by darkness. God designed the kingdom such that God must be the initiator, the sustainer of every spiritual process. So it's not an issue of whether the process was spiritual or not. Are you getting my point? If it was not initiated by God and sustained by God, it is of the devil. 
even if it produces the result you expected it to produce. What that means is, if I kill a small child and use the blood to take to a herbalist, and in one month I become a billionaire, did I really become a billionaire? Yes. Did real money come to me? Yes. So am I righteous for doing that? No. Am I going to hell for doing that? Of course. A correct process. Can I help charity with the money? Yes. Can you bring the money and sow it in church? Many people are doing it. Does it make it right? No. Why? Because the spirit of God or the word of God, the character of the kingdom did not initiate and sustain that process. Are you understanding what I'm teaching tonight? Let me give you a little example. I'm already doing sign of the cross so that some of you will not stone me. How many of you believe that man was made from the earth? The Bible says it right, Adam, dust. Now, what that means is the components of the earth were the raw materials that were used to create man. Is that true? How many of us agree? Man was made from dust. Is that true? I want to share with you a few spiritual secrets. Did you know that the hair of man was made from grass? When I teach you, I will share with you the principle of reflection. We call this in theology the principle of reflection. How that things just like the moon does not have life on its own. It reflects the glory of the sun. That means if you want to see what the moon is, there is something it was made in its similitude. So the Bible says man was created in the similitude of the earth in an attempt to communicate something. <laughs> Are you getting my point? You look at the similitude of your hair and the grass that grows. You can barb it, you can mow it. The eyes of man was made from water. This is how the harbor is. That's why they can go to the river. Is that true? And do incantation and the river will suddenly become eyes. They will begin to see from it. It's in your Bible. How did they invoke the spirit of Samuel? That's why I started by repenting. Should I share a few more? Listen, don't carry this tomorrow in your small fellowship and say, I have a word from the Lord. He opened my eyes yesterday and there's something I must share with you. How many of you know that your head, don't carry misguided revelations you cannot prove. When they sit you down and begin to ask you to prove, I make sure I can prove what I say before I say, I'm just right to hurry up. Praise God. I hope that we'll get to do Bible study. The teeth and the bones of men were made from rocks. The principle of reflection. Hallelujah. That's why after your body is long decayed like the rocks, your teeth and your skeletal system still remains. Hallelujah. The veins of man was made from the roots of plants. See the way the roots work. How, is it not them that supply nutrients? This is called the principle of reflection. Some of you are looking at me. What, the Bible gives you a clue. Is that true? It tells you that Adam was made from the components of the earth. Not just dust. That means the material of his physical creation were components of the earth. This is the principle that witches and wizards take advantage of. So when they want to see something, someone stole in your house, and your parents who are idol worshippers say, let's go to Baba's place. He just says, bring me a calabash. Is that true? And then they go to a riverside. All of a sudden, the man says, it was on Tuesday, 2 o'clock. This is what many prophets are using today. Are you seeing? manipulation of spiritual laws that were not initiated and sustained by the spirit but they are in their spiritual laws hallelujah listen the reason why hear me the reason why man can survive in this system are you getting my point was because 
part of the tools that were used to create his physical body were compliant to the system he's living in. Are you getting my point? That's why when you are sick, the plants can still heal you. Is that not true? Doctors use what? Is it not processed herbs? Native doctors use what? No, not just herbs. Herbs plus power from the underworld. Is that true? So whether through medicine or through whatever, the supernatural is at work there. Because the doctor gives you chloroquine, the remaining is a system that they cannot explain. You don't swallow drugs and look at the drugs and say, Panadol, go to my head. Make sure you don't dodge to the leg. Do you say that? You just do what? And the Panadol, configured within itself, knows that as busy as your body is, it should find its way to your head. That's the same way a microorganism that you call unicellular. How many of you did complexity in biology? And you were taught that um, unicellular organisms have the least complexity. Is that true? Yet, a, a, a waterborne disease can enter your body, a unicellular cell, but it can know that it's your heart it should go and attach itself to. Yet, we call them unicellular. And it enters your body. It sees your eye. It just jumps in. You say, I'm not for the eye. Where is the heart? It has never, it was not there when the human heart was created. Yet, it can find its way and know that this is the heart and stay there. And know that there are white blood cells and other platelets and the rest coming in the body. And it stops and begins to paralyze your immunity. Yet, we call it unicellular. So, could it be that, that, that there is a lie somewhere? In this story, write what they taught you. Write what they taught you. Hallelujah. What is it about blood that makes it powerful? Blood is a representation of the life of whatever organism produced that blood. And it's also a representation of the quality of life. Not just the life, but the quality, the levels So the Bible says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. If Joshua Selman sinneth, according to the law of God, he must die. Are you getting my point? If a do sins, according to the law of God, he must die. If this little baby sins, according to the law of God's justice, he must die. So Satan said, I'm aware of this law. Let's take that law to the Garden of Eden. And when he used it and man fell, Satan was excited. Do you know he was excited? Because he knew that man was doomed to die. I've said it again and again. I hope you know that Adam was not deceived. There's no time I would have shown you from the Bible. A lot of people keep blaming ladies and say, you people, wicked people, you spoiled our generation. There's nothing like that. Listen, it was for the love that man had for the woman. Listen, do you know what it means to fall short of God's glory? It doesn't mean to backslide. It's to reduce yourself to a spiritual strata where you cannot become in the class of God again. Are you getting my point? That's what happened to Eve when she ate. Adam was still standing, but there was no relationship. And he took the tree and joined her. The Bible clearly says Adam was not deceived. Ladies, I bring you deliverance in Jesus' name. Any man that falls should hold himself responsible. Love took you there. Love is still taking men to do all kinds of things today. Where did the saying, I will die for you, come? From Adam. From a lot of zealous lovers around who may not understand the implication of what they are saying. They didn't even run for you. Talk more of dying for you. Let's continue. Praise the Lord. The soul that sins, it shall die. So, 
let me hurry up with the story. It was inevitable for the blood of bulls and goats to atone. Why was it, why was it not possible for complete atonement? You know what atonement is? Let me define it for you very quickly. Please write that word down. To make atonement is to satisfy someone or something for an offense committed. To satisfy someone or something for an offense committed by paying a price. So you atone uh, by, by satisfying somebody or something that was offended by paying the price. The legal terminology is bail. When you go and pay some amount so that someone who was declared guilty can come out of a prison cell. Hallelujah. So every time you talk about blood, the first function of blood is to atone for justice or judgment that is speaking somewhere. Are you getting my point? If it is true that life works on a legal ground, whenever you talk about blood, we talk about mercy. But uh -uh, you will not understand it just by talking about mercy. You have to know that justice necessitated the coming of that blood. The mercy there is to the one who could not help himself, who committed the offense. Are you understanding what I'm saying now? So when man fell, they tried the blood of bulls, but the quality and the longevity, listen, another spiritual law, another spiritual law that was given Moses was that when the lamb was to be slain, all right, the age of the lamb mattered. Are you getting me? The atonement, a day in the Hebrew called Yom Kippur, it was once in a year. Are you getting my point now? It was called the day of atonement. Once in a year, when the priest would come in with the blood of a lamb in the most holy place, to atone for the sins of the Israelites. And it so happened, listen, that the atonement, the validity of the atonement was what? One year. Are you getting my point? And if that were to continue, then every year, the priest would keep atoning. So now Jesus shows up. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. When Jesus showed up after... 30 years, he began to carry out his ministry. Did very mighty things. Now, I need you to know that the kind of birth that happened to Jesus was one of the reasons that qualified him to be able to use his blood. Are you getting me? How well, I hope that you know, if you don't know, know it now, that the blood in the child comes from the man. Is that true? Medically proven. The woman is just the one that holds the child but the blood of the child comes from the man not the woman hence it was a possibility for Mary to take Jesus without the nature of man corrupting him the very cell that fertilized Mary's egg was the life so way the life of God that's why the Holy Ghost himself played the fatherly role of Jesus are you getting me Joseph wanted to marry Jesus. God said, oh God, you wait. To, you are going to wait. Just be patient for one year. Because something needs to happen here without your involvement. You are a man. You are a victim. You are part of those that need to be saved. There is a voice of judgment speaking. The Bible says, by one man, sin came. And then through reproduction, other people came into that covenant. Are you getting my point now? So every baby that was born, well, even if the baby had never committed any act of sin, that voice of judgment began to speak from birth. Because all have sinned and fallen short as a result of that sin of the glory of God. How many? All have sinned and fallen short of that glory. Jews, Gentiles. Don't let anybody make you look like your state is the worst. When they say this is your state now, I will say all have sinned. How many? 
Is that not a powerful revelation? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now Jesus came. Please watch this. Mary just agreed with the Holy Spirit. And he was born. The Bible says the power of the highest shall what? Overshadow you. All of a sudden, her stomach started protruding like a woman who was pregnant. Now watch this. Mary had not been defiled by a man. And then the cell of a man was not in her womb. So Jesus grew and came out. Are you getting my point? Watch this principalities and powers they knew listen they knew what happened that's why if you are born again like Jesus you must be born of the spirit are you getting my point Jesus was born of the spirit is that true if you are to be really born again then you must be born of the spirit so Jesus came and he, he disguised himself because the Holy Ghost had not come to identify him. So, when through all of the constellations and the operations of certain spiritual laws, the Herod and his wise men and all the people, they knew that another king had been done, had been born. The spirit of the Antichrist began to move them to look for Jesus and kill him. Are you getting my point? So, they killed all the children and Herod believed that Jesus was one of all those children that were killed. So he piped down until he died. And then the angel told Joseph, he said, you can go now. They that seek the life of the child have, have, have died. Jesus walked for 30 years. He kept doing a lot of things nobody knew. But listen, Satan had been studying what was happening in history. Are you getting me? So when John, because a prophecy was left in the Garden of Eden, he says, Satan, you think you have done your worst, but the seed of the woman shall bruise your head. So Satan got scared because he knew that God does not just talk nonsense. Before God speaks, he has made the... So he started seeing, and Satan knew that nothing happens on earth until he's prophesied. So he started chasing every prophet and everybody to hear what they will say. And then Isaiah said, who had believed our report? He started confusing Satan. What is all this? That's why the prophets use coded languages. They said, he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. He was bruised for our iniquities. And hell was saying, who is this? Is this Isaiah? So it kept on like that. When John was born, Satan was almost sure because he was the last prophet before Jesus. That's why the spirit of the Antichrist moved the Pharisees to ask John, are you that one that should come so that they can kill him fast? And then John, they said, are you Elias? John said, nay. Are you this? He said, nay. And the thing frustrated Satan. He said, who are you? He said, I'm the voice of one crying. He said, what kind of God? It was a coded language. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then a time came when Jesus would no longer hide it. He came. While John was being trained in the wilderness. Are you getting me? God gave him a signal. He said, whoever you see the dove come upon, know as a sign. I've said it again. John was not a Baptist. His baptizing was to help him identify Jesus. That was why after the baptism of Jesus, he stopped baptizing. John was a prophet. John was a prophet. He started baptizing. And then when he saw Jesus, he looked. He looked with his prophetic eyes. He said, behold the lamb. I found you. The scribes were just standing dumbfounded. And then he said, no, I am not worthy. Because the information that was given to me in the secret place about you, I cannot be the one to baptize you. Jesus said, we are still working something. Suffer it to be so, because I'm coming on a legal ground. So everything must be done. Somebody must lay hands on me. Suffer it to be so, that the scripture, not that I will be Lord, that the scripture should be fulfilled. So that when Jesus dies, there will be no law that Satan can take to God and say, based on this, it was not followed. 
So Jesus had to follow the process. Are you getting my point now? And then finally, the Holy Ghost descended upon him. And God said, all right, it's no secret again. This is that beloved son. The moment he announced it, Satan told all the demons, what are you waiting for? Oh yeah. That was why they started looking for Jesus to kill him. Immediately. Immediately. They started looking for Jesus to kill him. Hallelujah. And then he told them, he said, let me give you another mystery. My time has not come. In other words, don't you think I'm afraid of death? I came to do a lot of things. Death is part of it because my life must go. And if my life, listen, the life of God came into blood so that it can be shed. Are you getting my point? Since the life of every flesh is in the blood, God's own life concealed itself in the blood of Jesus. I pray that you will understand what I'm sharing. I'm getting to the crux of this message. Please bring the communion and something mighty will happen in this place. Like. Hallelujah. So Jesus was walking with the blood of God. Are you getting my point? The life of a flesh is in the blood. So this was the life of God. It was going to be transferred into man. But Satan did not know. That was why every time they looked, the demon said, Ah, is this not the Son of God? And Jesus said, Keep quiet. This is a hidden thing. When it was time for him to give up himself, something happened. Hallelujah. Something very, very remarkable happened. Please follow me. Jesus now said, This is the hour of darkness. And he sat with the disciples at table. Watch this. A powerful covenant was going to take place. Jesus said, guys, it's time for you to eat bread and take wine. And the disciples said, we've been hungry. We can't wait. Jesus said, hold on. Something is happening here you do not know. In John, when you read from verse 6 down to 8, Jesus began to speak. And he shared another spiritual mystery. That it is possible to come into a man. By eating his flesh and his blood. Hold on. What is the mystery of marriage? What is the mystery of marriage? Two people. Come, my dear. When you understand this, you will know how it is possible for us to come into Christ. Hallelujah. Watch this. This is a lady on her own. I'm someone on my own. We come together. And by a divine pronouncement, is that true? A divine pronouncement, they say we are husband and wife. We have become one flesh. All right? Then when a man sleeps with his wife, they now give birth to one entity that is a combination of both of them. It's the culmination of their oneness. So the child that is born is the ultimate demonstration that the man and the woman are truly one. Is that true? Help me, is it true? so Jesus listen Jesus who serves as the second Adam now sits with his Eve the bride and that was a wedding matrimony that was going to go on there but they did not understand listen to me the church is called the bride of Christ Jesus is called the second Adam just like the first Adam was betrothed to what his wife. So Jesus is about to be betrothed to his bride. Are you getting the revelation? But the people did not understand. And it was 12. Only 12 of them. Because 12 is the prophetic number for government. And the government represents the people. Are you understanding this now? So Jesus sits at table. And he takes of the cup. Praise the Lord. Watch this. He already told them in John. He said, if there is a possibility for you to eat my flesh, drink my blood, you can have my life. And what was his life? The life of God. Look at the spiritual laws that were being obeyed to transfer the life of God into the life of man. 
Are you getting the point? It had to be done on legal, on legal grounds. And he said, this, just like a priest announces, I now declare you husband and wife. Jesus standing as the high priest said, this is my cup of the new covenant that I am now entering with you. Drink this as often as you can. Are you getting me now? And he broke the bread. He said, take my body, my body that is given for you. And when they took it and they ate it, Jesus laughed because they had now satisfied the spiritual law that can permit the world to come into the man. So I, I'm, please permit me to use a word that may sound vulgar. It's like a man sleeping with his wife to give birth to a baby. That's what we call the passion of the Christ. Are you getting my point? The church in Christ going to the cross to birth a new seed. How do I communicate this? Oh Lord, help me. All the while, Satan did not know this. And Satan kept moving the people. Kill Jesus. Notice, Jesus refused to die. Because if he just died like that, it would be a waste. Man was not involved. Just like a, a woman cannot sleep with herself or a man sleep with himself. They need two of them to produce that child. Are you getting my point? So the communion was necessary for crucifixion to make sense. And the shedding of blood to make sense. Are you getting what I'm saying? The only way I see one or two small children here. If not, I would have used the mystery of marriage to explain to you what really happened. But let's, God will grant us grace. You are understanding in Jesus' name. That's why marriage is a serious thing to God. Because it was the principle that was used to redeem man. Are you getting my point? So Jesus immediately after the communion now he had the legal right to become sin are you getting my point then he went to get semeny when he went to get semeny look at immediately after the communion he went to get semeny and he started crying why was he crying i will tell you why he was crying he was crying because now on legal basis he needed to become the second adam how did the first adam become a fallen man the Holy Spirit left him. So at the Garden of Eden, I mean at Gethsemane, just like the Garden of Eden, are you seeing now? They were all gardens. The Holy Ghost had to leave Jesus. That was why Jesus was crying. He said, is there a possibility? The psalmist knew this and he was speaking. He said, take not your Holy Spirit from me. It was a prophetic statement. He said, cast me not away from your presence. He was not singing a song. He said, take not your Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit was taken from Jesus. At that point, he fully became man, seen, able to take the nature of man. And from there, they caught him. And he looked helpless. He could not do anything. The prophecy of Isaiah 53 begins. It says, who has believed our report? In other words, if we explain this to men, will they believe that God disguised himself, became a man, he said, who had believed our report? That whoever believes that report, the arm of the Lord will be shown to him. That's salvation. He said, who has believed that report? Hallelujah. So Jesus went to the cross. Now, all the things that happened to Jesus was very important. A crown of thorn was put on his head because man lost dominion. And the symbol of dominion is the crown of the king. So everything that happened from there was the exchange everybody say the exchange so everything we were not christ became so that we will become what he is you get the revelation so they put the crown of thorns on his head they didn't even know what they were doing and he kept quiet when they started flogging him when they started flogging him it was very very although he was in pains but it was the fulfillment of isaiah's prophecy watch this when they were flogging him what started coming out everybody what started coming out 
and I told you that every time blood is shed, the issue of death begins to be negotiated because without the shedding of blood, there is no what? Remission of sins. That means there is no pardoning from death. The moment the blood of Jesus started touching the earth from which man was created, it was a mystery. And they were flogging Jesus Christ, tearing his flesh. The Bible says he shall see the travail of his soul because man did not offend Satan. Man offended God. Are you getting me? So according to the justice of God, either man or somebody else must be punished to the degree of that offense for God to be appeased. If I steal your laptop and they catch me and they say I'm going to spend 10 days in the prison, that punishment comforts you. It's a reward for that stealing. So the Bible says God will see the travail of whoever that scapegoat is and a time will come when it will satisfy his heart for the offense of man then justice would have had its cause are you getting me so satan made them to be beating jesus christ and they did not know they led him to the cross it was a tree that made man fall it would be a tree that would redeem man and so they went to the cross and when they hung there watch this Jesus looked at them. And when he looked at them, watch a mystery that happened at the cross. Do you know, I told you that the passion of the Christ can be likened to intercourse between a man and a woman to produce a child. I'll prove it to you. Do you notice that at the cross, like the climax of that intercourse, who was there? The mother of Jesus. Where was the father? Because we were going to be born of the spirit. The mother of Jesus was there. Are you getting my point? And then John was standing there. Is that true? And he was called John the beloved. Jesus said, you people are mourning. You don't know what you represent here. He said, mother, behold what? Your son. And son, behold the woman that gave birth to you. It was a coded language. Because women are gates in the spirit. The only gates through which another life can pass. Hallelujah. And when Jesus hung on that cross. While his blood was dripping. In the realm of the spirit. The blood was not just falling everywhere. The blood was falling in a specific container. It was the life. Zoe was just giving way please listen very very important and jesus hung not as the christ but jesus who had become sin jesus the career of joshua selman's sin jesus the career of maman's sin jesus the car are you getting my point now on that cross that was what paul saw he said, I have been crucified with Christ. What did Paul see? Hallelujah. And now Jesus looked up and he said, it is finished. What was he seeing? At what point did he know that it was finished? And then he died. I've taught it again and again. When sinners die, where do they go to? So Jesus died sin, not just a sinner. So where would he go to? He couldn't have gone to heaven. Because the spirit of adoption that seals men was not on him. And he went. There was joy in hell. All kinds of joy unspeakable. All of a sudden, Jesus shows up in hell. Hallelujah. And I hope you know, well, we'll talk about that. The compartment of hell called Hades, the place of the dead. I know there have been a lot of debates about that. I won't go into that. But the saints of all were there. In First Peter, the Bible tells us that Jesus went there, preached the gospel to them. Is that true? <laughs> when Jesus went, Satan looked, and that was when he knew that this was Adam coming to collect back the keys, the second Adam. The first Adam was there. He was part of all the people, together with Father Abraham and the rest. 
the place of the dead. And Jesus, the Bible says, all the cohorts of hell were on him. They were trying to stop him. When God saw the travail of his soul and justice was made, listen, very powerful. The Bible says Jesus shook them, making a public show of them. All this drama happened in hell. Oh. And immediately that happened, he went to Satan, Satan himself, and said, give me the keys Adam gave you in the Garden of Eden. Give it to me. You see that? And yeah, that's what happened. Revelation chapter 1. I am he that was dead, but now is alive and I hold the keys. Where did he get it? He got it in hell. Give that keys of dominion that gave you access over the earth. Because until Jesus died and collected it, Satan was the god of this system. Legally, what Adam should have been. That's why Satan took Jesus and said, come. He took him to a mountain and showed him the riches. Jesus never argued with Satan because he was not lying. Satan oh, dragged Jesus to a mountain. He said, come, all these glories, I will give it to you. Satan said, because it has been given to me. He was mocking Jesus. Adam gave it to me. And Jesus said, no problem. It's a matter of time, I will strip you of it. When he collected it, watch this. He went to the prison, Isaiah 61, to open the prison gates to those who are bound. You see what the prophet was saying? He opened that prison and Abraham and the rest, they joined him. And when he resurrected, the Bible says graves were open. Whose graves? Is it not in your Bible? Graves were open and the saints of old came out. They walked in the streets. They knew them. They knew them. Let me prove to you they knew them. At the transfiguration of Jesus, when Elijah and Moses appeared, what did Peter say? He said, wow, thank God we are here. Let us make three tents. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Who told him? Hallelujah. Jesus resurrected. Came back into this realm. And he was about to finish the sacrifice as the high priest. So when Mary wanted to touch him, she said, Rabboni, I said, no, don't touch me. I paid so much price to make sure that I get this blood. And right now, I'm going to the heavenly tabernacle, the book of Hebrews. So Jesus enters, he was both the lamb and the high priest. And I told you there is a law that the age of the lamb determine the validity of the atonement. So the blood of God, which is the life of God, who is the ancient of days, the ageless one, that blood was drained. And when Jesus went to heaven, he poured it upon the heavenly tabernacle. The moment that happened, he came down. He said, guys, touch me. Touch any part you want to touch. It no longer can defile me. The transaction has been done. This was the revelation Paul saw and said, wow, had they known this, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So Satan was part of those who acted the movie to make sure man was saved. That's why every time you mention the blood, it reminds him of his foolishness. Every time you mention the blood, it reminds him that the price had been paid and that he was part of those who ensured that the price was paid. Hallelujah. Watch this. I'm about to round up. When they touched him, Jesus said, All hail. He said, All authority in the heavens and in the earth has been given unto me. And he began to teach them a lot of things. These were the mysteries that he was teaching them for 40 days in Acts chapter 1 before he finally did the Bible says he was with them a period of 40 days teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. He was sharing this thing with them. And Paul now telling the Hebrew church, he said, let us therefore, the blood, somebody has paid the price with his life. Every time you say blood of Jesus with revelation, what you are saying is whatever will stop me from entering this, let the life of God 
give me access to step in. Are you seeing that now? So if the traditional rulers in your village and so on and so forth, they have been sacrificing before you were born and they believe they can lay claims and you come in through the blood, suddenly the price of the blood opens the gate and he says, walk out, you are free. You can shout blood of Jesus and remain in captivity because there is no knowledge and because there is no revelation or you have not known how to activate that which Christ has done. So I come from a place with witchcraft, for instance. I come from a place with killing. And all of a sudden, I realize that this blood was shed for me. And I stand. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I begin to speak. The moment I say blood of Jesus, because demons are not like men. They don't have short memory. It's as clear as yesterday before them, what Jesus did. And so when I begin to plead the blood, what I mean is, I begin to call the price that was paid for my freedom. Just like somebody wants to harass you and you say, is this not my receipt? Did I not pay school fees? Was it not complete? What then is the accusation? And the Bible says, every time we take of the bread, which is a type of his body. Listen. And we take of the cup, which is a type of his blood. We are not just satisfying hunger, but we are reenacting a revelation. The same way people offer sacrifices again to remind the gods that we are still loyal. Over this land, it still belongs to you. Even after 100 years, gods, you are still the ones in charge. Every time we take this, we are not only speaking to God, but we are speaking to the gates of hell. And we are saying we are still one with Christ. And this is the proof. We are eating of his body. We are drinking of his blood. That means we have access to his life because the life of that flesh is in the blood. And when we take it, that life becomes part of our inheritance. And then it can open the doors of sickness. It can open every kind of legal door. The blood. The life of God. Watch this. Although this is ordinary zobo or drink or whatever. And this is ordinary wafers. But by faith. The same way the Holy Ghost made the word become flesh. The Holy Ghost can make the flesh become the word. Hallelujah. So the Holy Ghost takes this flesh and changes it into a literal spiritual substance. That the moment you take this, it's not just going to your stomach. Because the Bible says the body which is the word is able to go beyond your bones and marrows and to the joints and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It can purify a man's conscience. So when blood is crying against you and saying, are you supposed to succeed in life? Are you not supposed to be a victim? And the devil says, were you not part of those drinking and smoking? You say yes. And the moment he wants to execute that judgment, the blood comes in between you. And Jesus says, how about this? How about the price? How about the price that was paid? And so Satan wants to work another formula. And that formula is ignorance. So although the price has been, has been paid, he comes to many believers and convinces them that the price has not been paid or the principle to activate that reality in their lives. There are people right now who will look at this communion and just think it's a ritual. That's why the Bible says, be careful when you take the communion. If your heart is not truly committed to God and you take the communion, the Bible says, for this purpose, some are weak and some even do sleep. That means taking the communion in a way that mocks God can kill a man. The same way it can give life. Tonight, the life of God is in that blood of Jesus that was shed. And as we take this prophetically and symbolically, 
I want you to know that mighty things will happen in this place. That's why I gave you revelations. Many of you, as you take this communion, imagine yourself standing at the gates of your families and looking at the assaults of the devil. And as you lift up this communion, you say, Lord, behold, this is the evidence that I should walk out of this age-long thing. This is the evidence. This is my evidence. This is my school fees. When Satan says, after all, you committed an abortion, you say, Satan is not a lie, but this is the evidence. The speaking blood that speaks mercy, that judges every other voice. When the devil looks and says, you will remain barren. Did they not covenant your family? You lift it and say, this is my evidence. The body and the bread. This is a sign that Jesus died. And Jesus looks from his throne and says, Satan, you had him. Give way. And he gives you way to walk out of that prison. Many people will be healed tonight. I mean it from the depths of my heart. Many restorations will happen tonight. Some of you may not even be able to hold this bottle, I tell you. Because I'm about to pray that the power of the highest that overshadowed Mary, that it will come upon this communion. Everybody rise up. Just blast in tongues for five minutes. Ratatakapa, the speaking blood, the speaking blood, the speaking blood, the atoning blood, the speaking blood, the atoning blood, the speaking blood. He says, Joshua Selman. Not guilty. Joshua Selman. Not guilty. Yes, you sin. But the blood speaks. The blood speaks. Let him go free. Let her go free. I paid it with my life. Hear me. Hear me. Revelations. 11 and 12 begins to tell us that satan is called the accuser of the brethren when they caught the woman who was in adultery the bible says they caught her in the very act that means they didn't even allow her to take her bath with all the evidences they dragged her to jesus and jesus said he who does not have sin cast the first stone and when they left he said woman where are your accusers that's what satanic altars do they lift up accusations legal accusations that will keep you in sickness legal accusations that you will not get that job legal accusations that the marriage will not come but tonight as you leave the communion the speaking blood the blood of the Lord Jesus that speaks, that speaks, that advocates. Hallelujah. Everybody shout the blood that speaks. The blood that sets free. The blood that redeems. The blood that satisfies justice. Now listen. Listen. Before I begin to administer the communion, we are going to do it very fast. I tell you, I sense the anointing of God strong on me. Because after this, I'm going to lay hands on people. Hallelujah. Listen. There are two prayer points we are going to pray. The first one, Isaiah 53 verse 1, it says, who has believed our report? So this is for those who believe the report. There are people who have not believed the report. 
So the communion will not make any sense to you. But tonight, who has believed this report? Who has believed that the blood speaks? I don't care what religion you belong to. I don't care what you have done or not done. Tonight, first prayer point, Lord, I believe your report. Lift your voice and pray. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe you died for me. You shed your blood, which represents your life as the highest price. Greater love had no man than this, than a man laid down his life, than a man laid down his life by shedding his blood, laid down his life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wrote a book years ago. It never got to be published. The title of the book is Not Guilty. It was a revelation. I hope that when God permits us to start writing books and publishing it, I believe that that's one of the books that will set people free. Not Guilty. Everybody say Not Guilty. I want you to look at all the things you have done right and say because of the blood I am not guilty. Look at all the things that you have done wrong and say because of the blood I am not guilty. Yes, I stole money, but because I believe this report I am not guilty. Yes, I served idols. It's true that I went to the shrine, but because of the speaking blood I am not guilty. Atonement, remission, liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last prayer point in one minute. I like you to pray radically. Mention all the things you need the blood to speak over tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Please take it seriously. Lord, let the blood speak. There is a chain over my life. Let the blood speak tonight. This terminal disease. This barrenness. This mental backwardness. The speaking blood we invoke the power of the speaking blood hey. Hey. over my marital life access to wealth and prosperity over my spiritual life I invoke the power of the speaking blood of the speaking blood hallelujah hallelujah let's have all the heads of departments Please, quickly, quickly, let's save time. Mighty things will happen in this place. Listen. Listen. We are going to start from outside. I know that. I know that. 
Many of us have taken communion in our churches. Some we do it every week. And you just think it's a formula to satisfy hunger. Tonight, you will know that there is a power. You watch what happens in this place as we begin to take the communion. Because I'm about to pray. Without the Holy Spirit, this is Zobo and Wefas. But the power of the highest shall overshadow it. Hallelujah. I'll serve the heads of department. You take it quickly. I tell you, see, some of you, as you take this communion, things will begin to happen. Not just miracles. You will know that something is happening to you. Listen. The Bible says, I will show signs in the heavens and signs in the earth. It said, blood, fire, and smoke. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let the power of the highest overshadow this. You left two sacraments with the church. The first is the doctrine of baptisms, buried with Christ and risen with him. The second is the communion, the mystery of our union, partakers of his suffering that have qualified in the sufferings of Christ and now to walk in the glory that follows. Holy Spirit, rest upon this. In the name of Jesus, let this communion be empowered. It ceases to just be mortal liquid. Let this contain the power of God. I give this communion a voice in the spirit. That the moment it is taken, let it begin to speak over altars. Let it speak over the works of darkness. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon this communion in the name of Jesus Christ worship team are you ready you minister to us powerfully everyone just begin to pray in tongues they will direct you I will serve the heads of department quickly and then they will coordinate it you will start coming from outside non-stop until we are done please be praying in tongues the moment you take it hallelujah listen it's going to be in this order you pick the bread, just one piece. You take the cup, and then you put the cup here, and just go back. I'm sure that we're going to need some more cups, so please make sure we coordinate ourselves well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In that same night, when he took of the bread, he said, this is my body. Just take a piece. Lord, we do this with reverence. Go ahead, take it, take it. And then pick the cup, just pick one. All right, very quickly, outside, start rushing to come. The power of God is so strong there here. Just be praying as you're coming. Quickly, quickly, please. Just pick one, take the drink and move. Welfare, please walk with us. Let's, let's have replenishing very quickly. The speaking blood. 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 Like that, 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 Please keep coming outside. Hurry up, hurry up. Oh, 
Thank you, Jesus. Yokes are breaking. The blood is speaking. The blood is speaking. The blood is speaking. Please don't take it in safe time. Safe time, do it very fast. Sick bodies are getting healed. The Lord is healing people. The blood is speaking healing. Say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Call the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Save time, those outside. Oh, 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 oh,
speaking blood the life of God you are taking in the very life of God the mystery of communion
to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every
Prophesy the game. with me very quickly to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 10. Verse 27. My God, the power of the Holy Ghost is strong in this place. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your Worshippers, go and take your own quickly. Isaiah 10, 9, 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. And it shall come to pass in that day. Which day? Which day? Which day? That the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder. And his yoke from off your neck. He said, and the yoke shall be destroyed. Because of the anointing. I didn't just choose to do this. Trust me. It is hard work to lay hands on everybody in this place. Hallelujah. There are three things that you will receive as I lay hands on you. It's important you know. Number one, many of you are going to receive fresh unction. Fresh unction. You will know that there is an upgrade in your spiritual life. The second thing that you are going to receive is a breakthrough anointing upon your life. Breakthrough, breakthrough. The Bible says that you shall receive, the yoke shall be taken because of the anointing. We need, not only will you receive breakthroughs, hallelujah. And the third thing is that as I lay hands on you, those who are sick, let her try and take it. Please, she must take it. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. No matter what it is, if she can't stand, just take her somewhere. Please, just if, if they are done, just move the tables. Hallelujah. You will be healed, the third thing. These three things will come upon you. Please, someone, can you just get a rack or the tissue? Just clean this quickly, please. Again, we are going to start from outside. It's going to be a quick match. As you march, just lay your hands and say, Lord, as these hands come upon me. Many of you are so used to laying on of hands. You, you experience it every day and every time. When Benny Hinn was laying hands on the people, Ora Roberts looked at him 
and said, Benny, don't just lay hands on them. Give them something. Give them something. Hallelujah. The laying on of hands is even a doctrine in the spirit. Hallelujah. Father, let your power come upon this oil. Let there be breakthroughs. Worshippers, I need you to be in the spirit and I need you to give a sacrifice of worship. Let it not stop at all, the instruments. I tell you, there is a heavy anointing on me right now. Ushers, we will need you so that those who fall, um, we can coordinate them. Pray for one minute. Say, Lord, let something come upon my life. Especially those who are coming from outside Zaria. I give the chains. Yeah. I give the chains. Lord, may your power come upon my hands. May they become the hands of the Christ. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please come quickly. I give the chains Take the fire. I give the chains
Hallelujah. Now I'll lay hands on two of the rows together. Just hold the mic for me.
Lord Jesus, we give you the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I won't do much. Next week is miracle service. We'll have time to do a lot of great things. But the power of God is very strong here. Father, I declare. Let the blood begin to speak. Right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the blood begin to speak now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the blood begin to speak now. Let the blood begin to speak now. Let the blood begin to speak now. Let the blood begin to speak outside. Let the blood begin to speak inside. Against every voice that is not of God. I command, let the life of God that has paid for everything that the devil attempts to hold you captive for, be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Satan, the price has been paid. Release them now. Release them now. The price has been paid. Be free now. Be healed now. Receive restoration now. Receive breakthrough now. Thank you, Jesus. Please, let's have the announcements very quickly. We're out of time. Do not miss next week's Friday. It's going to be a very unique miracle service. Hallelujah. Let me just minister to a few people very quickly. Hallelujah. Where's the gentleman that came from Abuja? I know that a number of people came. The one who had a chat with our head of protocol. Where is he? I know that there are, some, there are some people that came from Abuja. I'll see you differently. But there is somebody specifically. The power of God is strong in this place. Please. Can you identify the person? Let me have the person very quickly. Okay. Is it Abuja or Abia? Abia. Abuja. Okay. While they are looking for that one, where is the person who came from Abia? Is he around? The person from Abia, please, if I call your case, run out quickly. Is it Pofi or Kofi? Someone from Abuja, please, just come out quickly. Brother, you came all the way because you were looking for something. Lift your hands. Look at me. May you go back another man. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. This is not just a normal hand laying. My God, give him something. Take it now in the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be the same. It will burn in you like electricity. It's a new level of unction and wisdom and grace. Oh, that's a person on the floor. Addiction. We break that gay spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And we break alcoholism. Satan, you made a mistake. We curse it. Let him go now. And someone lay hands on him. I stretch my hands now. Let him go. Out. Out. Come out of him now. The sets that came from Abuja, where are they? There is a set that came from Abuja. Please, if I call your case, just hurry up quickly. The guys that came from okay quickly i pray for you that god will feel your hunger in the name of the lord jesus that whatever it is that made you to come seeking for god may you find it lord i pray that they will find you in the name of the lord jesus may they find you by the power of the holy spirit where's the lady that came from portacourt villary portacourt 
She's not here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. Where is she? She's gone. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Those altars will be caused now. Let her go. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I release you and I release your family. Be free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, is there any other person who came from anywhere outside Zaria? Please come quickly. I just feel like, please save our time. We're out of time. Very quickly, very quickly, come and line up here. Thank you for lifting. The hunger you have. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Look at where people come from every week. Thank you for lifting. Hallelujah. From where? From where? Eh? Sorry. Kaduna. All Kaduna. Abuja. Ibadan. Kwara State. Mina. Joss. Abuja. Look at where people come from. Every week, they leave that distance. Yet there are some of us who are just a stone throw here. I want to pray for you people. May you get something. Please believe it. I'm going to lay my hands very quickly on you. Father, let something come upon them. Take it. Take it now. Take it. 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 In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May grace come upon you to do wonders and do mighty things. I prophesy understanding. Let your understanding be open in the name of Jesus Christ. And every power that limits you, I lift it off your life right now. In the name of Jesus, God bless you and thank you for coming. We celebrate you. Hallelujah. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, please, I'd like you to come out quickly. Even if you're just going back, come out quickly while I take the announcement. We're out of time. Hallelujah. If this is your first time, please just come out while I take the announcement. God bless you. God bless you. Let's listen to the following announcements, please, very quickly. We're happy to announce that the forms for School of Ministry are finally available. Hallelujah. Now, listen, the forms are free but limited, very limited. Hallelujah. Please, don't be emotional about picking the forms. Don't pick the form and stop someone else from attending the school of ministry. If you stay far, it's not going to be possible for you to come. The classes are weekend classes, just once a week, Saturday. Sometimes we could have fixed classes. It's a four-month program. Immediately after, um, immediately after the grace, just meet the protocol. It's on the basis of first come, first serve. There's no favoritism. I know who I am from this. I know your father. First come, no fighting. Please coordinate and organize yourselves. I believe they made much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is to announce the wedding solemnization between Justina Jacob. Please just be patient, those of you in front. Justina Jacob and Isa Augustine. Hallelujah. The wedding takes place tomorrow right 19th tomorrow at foundation of jesse church in kaduna the color is baby pink and mint green this is from the media and productions department anyone who is going back to mina should please meet with the media department please those who came from mina as you're going back just meet with the media department hallelujah after the meeting this is from the welfare and hospitality department donut and zobo is available immediately after the meeting just outside you can get project 10,000 is still on please please be a part of it involve your loved ones and everybody and God will bless you hallelujah you can book for counseling immediately after the meeting just right here with the protocol and logistics free bus is available immediately after the meeting okay um, those going to Congo and Shika only those going to Congo and Shika should wait at the projector stand Please, if you are not going to Congo and Shika, I believe you can get the bus somewhere else. But only those going to Congo and Shika, you wait at the projector stand outside immediately after the meeting. The Orions present the worship galore. The title is The Risen King. The date is Sunday, 20th April. Time is 4 p.m. 
Venue is Third Equa Church, New Extension B, behind Christ Gospel Church, Samaru. Hallelujah. If you do not have this, you can pick one. It's free. You can get it with the ushers. Those of you worshiping with us for the first time, thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia. We love you. We honor and we celebrate you. Can we appreciate God for your lives? <laughs> Hallelujah. This is not our usual venue, but we meet every Friday. May the Lord bless you and honor you. May you take the fire and change your territory in Jesus' name. Stretch your hands, saints of God, as we bless them and prophesy upon their lives. May the Lord bless you. May you encounter the grace of God in unusual ways. I pray that the hand of God will be strong upon your life. Whatever has not been working in your life, we command it to begin to work now. In the name of Jesus, we bless you with the presence of God. We bless you with a fresh desire for the things of the Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Thank you so much. I'd like you to follow the ushers. They'll just have your details and they'll welcome you on our behalf. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.